you a cock from pure memory. When I was in high school, I asked my mom if I could build a particle accelerator in the garage. My mom replied, sure. And don't forget to take out the garbage while you're at it. The accelerator used so much power that I ended up blowing all the fuses in the house. My poor mom said, why can't I have a normal son who plays sports? I woke at a nice Japanese girlfriend while you're at it. I went to the hardware store and bought a mile long coil of copper wire. My mom helped me set up the particle accelerator in the school football field. This caught the attention of some smart guy at some university who gave me a scholarship. In the future, we will have toilets that check your health. After using the toilet, it will talk to you. Hey, you are going to get cancer and die in a couple of years. Here's some medicine that will take care of that. Well, it turns out Einstein was wrong. Get used to it. There is a new game in town, string theory. Imagine you have strings and each time you pluck them, you get a different vibration, a different elementary particle. You are a symphony. You invited me on this show as a guest, so please do me the honor and answer my question. Can you name one form of government that is better than democracy? One day, Isaac Newton saw an apple fall from a tree. He then looked up at the moon and asked the most important question in physics history. If an apple falls, does the moon fall too? There was no math to calculate this, so he invented his own math, calculus. There was a 16 year old boy who had a silly question. He asked, what would the world look like from the perspective of a light beam? That boy was Albert Einstein. Or is this a Carl Sagan quote? I don't remember. When I was a little boy, it was on the news that the greatest genius who had ever lived had died. He died without finishing his work. I asked, why couldn't he finish? Why is it so difficult? It's just a homework problem, right? If you were to show people from a hundred years ago our technology today, they would think you were a wizard. If we were to look at the technology people will have in a hundred years, we would think they are gods. It was some scary comment and it scared people, but with physics, some guy could predict when the comet would come back and he used that information to pretend he was a god or something. Or is this a Neil deGrasse Tyson quote I'm thinking about? I think he said the Native Americans were tricked by this. Our universe was created either when two universes collided or when one universe split into two. What is dark matter? We don't know. There's a Nobel Prize waiting for you if you can figure it out. The speed of light slowed down at lunchtime. How can this be? In the future, you can suck up to people at cocktail parties. At the party, you can become Albert Einstein, you can wear a contact lens that lets you vibrate like a string. And when strings vibrate, they change. I was a string before. I vibrated. I became Michio Kaku. Is it any coincidence that when you rearrange the letters in my name, you cannot spell string? That's because I am not a string anymore. At the cocktail party, I used the toilet. When I sat down, 
The toilet told me to stop eating teddy grams. This frightened me. Teddy grams are my favorite. How could I stop eating them? I was so scared that I stood up from the toilet and without pulling my pants back up, I ran to the door. I opened it and ran as fast as I could away from the toilet. I noticed something, something strange. The cocktail party was empty. There was no one. I looked around the fancy room. I noticed a brown box on the floor. I walked closer to inspect it with my Michio Kaku eyes. No, I squinted. I picked up the box. My eyes widened. It was a box of teddy grams of the chocolate variety. I looked up at the God equation and asked, Why? To my pain, a brown flake fell from the fancy brown chandelier and into my cute little eyes. My body reacted with pain. My eye reacted with delight as it slowly chewed the brown flake and swallowed it. I noticed another one fall. This time, I jumped out of the way to dodge it. I hit my head and got a boo-boo. My head made an owie. I walked back to the brown flake. I picked it up with my incandescent finger. This was no flake. This is a teddy gram. I couldn't take it anymore. I ran out of the door and left the empty cocktail party. As I opened the door, strings of light entered my pupils. The strings, they entered me. I looked out over the horizon. I saw plumes of smoke coming out of a factory on top of a hill. The building was engulfed in bright white strings of light. The wording on the factory was just barely visible. Teddy Graham Factory. I knew this was where I was supposed to go. Everything in my life had led up to this moment. Everything pointed me towards the Teddy Graham Factory. Like the planet Earth, warm being space time, forming a well of gravity. Teddy Graham Factory warped space time and formed its own unique gravity. It drew me in. I set out for it. As I walked to the Teddy Graham Factory, I noticed there was no one. Just like the cocktail party, everyone had vanished. You know, I think this has something to do with teddy grams, I slurred to myself. Several moons had passed, however. The teddy grams factory seemed to be farther than it had been before. I could no longer make out the words, teddy grams factory. I don't know what to do, I giggled to myself. I looked back over my cute little shoulders. Behind me was the toilet. I decided to sit down and go poo poo. I was greeted with a friendly Ohio gozaimas, and when I finished, a friendly thank you. I asked the toilet what I should do. It reminded me to stop eating teddy grams. It warned me to never, ever approach the factory. But I have not eaten a single teddy gram since you told me, I whispered softly to the toilet as I sat on it. Kaku, you little chipmunk, don't you remember? 
You ate a teddy gram that fell from the chandelier. I did remember that. My little Michio Kaku, I ate it. It was out of my control. Google Docs then put a green underline under Kaku, I ate. I knew what I had to do. I walked back to the cocktail party. Despite walking away from it for many moons, it only took a few minutes to walk back to it. I placed my hand on the fancy rich person door handle. I turned it. I pushed the door open. White. White everywhere. A white void, just like my Big Think videos. Hanging from the whiteness was the Teddy Graham chandelier. This was the key. However, there was no way to reach it. It was a chandelier after all. It was too high up. So I did the unthinkable. I stood on my tiptoes, all seven of them, and pulled the chandelier down. It smelled like chocolate teddy grams because it was chocolate teddy grams. I walked back out of the white void. The toilet lay in front of my eyes, facing me once again as I exited. You don't like teddy grams, do you, Mr. Toilet? I screamed at the top of my eyes. I took the chandelier, lifted it above my head. My face made an angry face like Shane Sung from the Mortal Kombat movie just before he killed someone. I plunged the chandelier into the toilet. It fit perfectly. The toilet water turned brown from the chocolate teddy grams. The toilet spoke not. I looked up. The factory was closer than ever now. Chocolate smoke spewed from those pipe things you see on top of factories. It filled the sky. It filled the planet. It filled my vision. It filled the universe. I breathed it in. It filled me. Many billions of years later, I awoke in front of the Teddy Graham's factory door. I stood up. I spoke not. I looked behind me. Chocolate smoke. I looked above me. Chocolate smoke. I faced the Teddy Graham's factory door. I walked towards it. My footsteps echoed throughout the chocolate smoke, throughout the universe. I place my incompetent hand on the factory doorknob handle. I was frightened. I started crying. My little Michio Kaku face was sad. I tried to turn the doorknob handle. It didn't move. It was as if I was turning a door hob knob handle that wouldn't move. I laid down. I fell asleep. Over the next few years, I tried to get the door open. I even kicked it. One time, I jumped up and kicked it, but... Then my legs did the equal opposite reaction thing and pushed me back. I got many abu bu. This went on for decades, and then centuries. One time, I tried to scratch the door open. It hurt my hand digits. I laid down. I rested. Centuries later, I awoke with a clear mind. I knew what I had to do. I knocked on the door. It opened. Chocolate smoke spewed out of it, 
and engulfed me once again. I breathed it in, very yummy. I opened my eyes. It was a teddy gram standing on the floor, upright, actual size, the size of a teddy gram. It stood upright, surrounded by chocolate smoke. It spoke not. I walked up to the delicious chocolate teddy gram. It smiled at me. I smiled at it. I picked it up. I threw it in my mouth. I missed. It fell on the floor. I picked it up again. I looked at it real close to make sure there was nothing on it. I put it into my mouth. I chewed. After the first crunch, I heard a horrifying scream. After the second crunch was silence. The chocolate smoke engulfed me once again. I awoke, this time on the toilet from so many centuries ago. I looked around. I could hear people outside the toilet in the main cocktail party area. I looked down at the toilet I was sitting on. Why didn't you want me to eat Teddy Grahams anymore? I whimpered. Cock, it whispered back to me. The toilet water started to bubble. From the bubbles emerged a single Teddy Gram. It floated on the bubbles. I picked it up and looked closely into its eyes. My eyes. In my voice, it told me, You are what you eat.